If you want to make your game look like this, not like this, you need to learn and understand what are ties. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this lecture. You will understand what is time up, what is tile set, how it differs from each other, how to use them efficiently. A tile is like a puzzle piece that you use to build an entire game board. It is like a floor tile, but in a video game. This is a tile that I can choose and then I can paint on my map of the game. So this is like a basic part you use to create the background in a game. You will not create games with just a single tile. You need to store them in one place, in a map of tiles. That's why we need to create something what is called a tile map. In order to do it, we choose the main node of our game. Then we use the control A and we choose the tile map here, create. And now we created a node that can store something what is called a tile set. Tile set is a library of tiles that helps you design levels in a game. So when I choose here this empty and I hit new tile set, you will notice that we have got here a grid. And this grid represents how big each square is for the tile that you're gonna put on your map here. By default, this is set to 16 by 16 pixels, but you can increase it and you should increase it to the size that was provided by the assets creator. So in our case, it is 64 by 64. So I'm gonna change this to 64 by 64. And as you can see, the size has increased. Notice what is written here. This tile maps tile set has no source configured. The tile map is something that you use to paint your background. You paint from tile map because this is the place where you have all the tiles chosen from the tile set. Okay. So now we can need to like change this into this and select the source of the set for our tiles. And we are using tiny swords from the previous lectures. And now I am gonna do something like that. So drag and drop. And it asks us, do we want to automatically create something what is called Atlas? When I hit no, you will notice that now we need to select which tiles should appear in the tile map for later when you want to paint. So if I choose, for example, on this one, and now I go to the tile map, as you can see, I can't choose any other than this. As you can see, this is the only thing that I can choose and instantly paint if you I want. Control Z to go back or the right click to remove. We can, however, do something like that. Create ties in non-transparent texture regions. And as you can see, it will automatically choose tiles so the things in this grid, right? The pieces that can be used as the one for the painting. And now when I go to tile map, as you can see, I can choose any of them. If you want more textures in your game from different sources, now you can attach to this set of ties another texture this way. And now we're gonna choose the automatic option, which removed the transparent parts automatically. So remember this tile set, it's very important this is the place where you set up, okay? You have set up here, label. So this is the place where you set how your ties behave. And here you paint what you've chosen from before. But what do I mean by setup? You see, there are many things that you can change regarding how each square, how each tile affects the player, for example. Let's see, here you have something what is called physics layers that we're gonna talk in future. You can choose, for example, that this part here is gonna collide with player, okay? Only this part. And you can set up it in the tile set, right? You can't do it in tile map. In tile map, you are just using what you have done in the tile set. Let's paint something on our map. Let's say that I want to paint this. What will happen if I paint it? Notice that we have just removed our player for, from a game. 
but hey, you can come out from outside of this ties pretty easy but everything is behind it. it's because everything by default is on the same layer it means that they are like on the same level of displaying things but if they are on the same level then which thing should be drawn first in our game always when you have a node everything is painted in the order that you put here so we painted the player first then an M, then an M, and then the floor, and then the tide map. So in order to change this order, we gonna put the tide map at the start. Now tide map is always drawn as a first thing. That's why when I open it, you will notice that we are on the background that we have just drawn. What are the other ways of painting? Because, well, this seems a bit slow. You can choose from here, as you can see, different options. Line, rectangle, the bucket. And when you choose one of them, for example, line, you will notice that when I choose this, I will just make entire line. If I choose the rectangle and for example, this, I can you know, paint more at once. I can also have a bucket, which is gonna like fill something up. So when I do something like this and I remove this part, you will notice that I can like fill everything around it. But this thing is not fast anyway because, well, this is still manually creating your entire map. There are ways to improve this. So let's say that we finish this, okay, like this. Um, like this, let's finish it. Let's say that I like this pattern. Let's say that there are many other things on this place and I want to replicate it. How do we do it? We need to choose this entirely, but to choose, we need to change the painting to select tool, so S, for the shortcut and hold the left click. And as you can see, now I have a blue rectangle here and I can do something like Ctrl plus C and I can paste it into the patterns, okay? And now because I have it in the patterns, if you can see, now I can choose this pattern and draw it anytime I want. But remember that you are in the select mode. So we need to change it again to drawing. And as you can see, now I can just like replicate very fast things that create some kind of pattern that you want to repeat. But there is something even more crazy, which is called terrains. Here, you can do something like that. Create a terrain set, add element. And again, add element. And you're gonna name, for example, the terrain that we, you want to paint, like, for example, grass. And now, when we go to the tile set to set up things, right? Because we are like installing, we are setting what, how our tiles behave and you go to the paint mode here, you can change how property of each tile differs from other tiles. So it means that I can select now terrains and choose the terrain set that we've created here. This is terrain set zero. And here, as you can see, we have grass. And whatever I do now here, as you can see, this is the color that is here. Let's go back using Ctrl plus Z and maybe let's choose for grass something that represents grass, right? So something like that. And now I can say like, hey, this is grass, okay? Okay, so this is grass for my terrain. I can create another terrain, send, and here it will be something like this, right? So now I change it to sand, okay? and this is not enough because terrain is something that allows you later to replicate things. As you can see, when I go to tile map, you have got another tab terrains and this is empty now, but we can precisely set how things repeat. So when I have here in the setup mode grass and I choose, for example, this like this, when you make an error, you use the right click. As you can see, when I choose the places where the grass is, so you do not choose something like that because there is a grass and also the like the corner. What will happen when I go to the tile map? I have got all the options here. And when I do something like this, as you can see, I can paint. But the cool thing is that when I attach new things, they are like connecting to each other. I can also paint it like this. Wow, this is powerful, right? But if I paint a single one, as you can see, this is only a corner because we didn't set all possible variations. Look, now our algorithm that is behind the scenes of the program knows how to behave when we are painting something bigger. 
okay? But if we do now it this way, as you can see, it will know also how to paint a single one. So we should do also something like this, right? And now when I change it to sand, I need to do the same thing here. And now when we go to the tag map, I can also paint what? Sand without any problems, right? I can paint it in the line. I can paint it, you know, as for example, something like this. Uh, let's say something like this. And I want to fill up. That's great, right? It's super awesome because it like, uh, it saves you lots of time. Sometimes there might be mistakes, but you can, you know, fix them pretty fast. This is improving the speed of designing your future game level.